So in the previous video, I went through how the simplex algorithm works. And I utilized this example and worked through. And we got to our answer. And um, we can kind of see why we got to that answer and how that worked. So um, what I'm going to do now is introduce to you the initial tableau, or the simplex tableau, and how it looks. So essentially, it holds the same information that we went through in the previous video, uh, but instead it's in a table. So what we're going to do is we're going to have column headers where we have P first, then X, then Y, then S1, and then S2, our slack variables. And then we're going to have the right-hand side. So this is at the top, and we're going to have this in a table. So the first uh, bit here, the objective function, goes on your top line. So you've got one lot of P, minus two Xs, minus 1y, no s1s, no s2s, and the right-hand side is 0. Then you have your constraints. So you have no p's, 3x's, 1y, 1s1, 0s2s, and 6 on the right-hand side. Then for the second one, you've got 0 p's, 1x, 2y's, 0s1s, uh, 1s2, and seven okay and so that is the initial tableau okay so that's how we set it up um, working from our constraints into the initial tableau the next thing we need to do is choose a pivot so how do we do that well, what you do is you look along your top row and you look for the most negative number. Okay, So the most negative number in our case is the minus 2. So we have the minus 2 and the minus 1. Minus 2 is the most negative. And so this becomes what's referred to as your pivot column. So that's the pivot column in this case, in this first iteration. So you look down the pivot column. And what you then do is you divide your right-hand side by each of the values in your pivot column. So we're going to do 6 divided by 3, which is 2, and 7 divided by 1, which is 7. Okay. Now, when you do that, you ignore any dividing by 0. Okay. So you ignore that one. So if there were any zeros here, ignore that. And if uh, any of them were negative, you ignore those as well. Okay, So you're only looking for a positive entry divided by a positive entry here. And then what you do is you pick the smallest of those two. And so that's the two. Okay, So that one there is going to be our pivot. Okay. So of the two, that is the calculation that got us the smallest value, and so that is the one that will be considered the pivot in this case. So that's how the actual algorithm works. So what was going on behind the scenes was this is the one that I can increase fastest. So that's the most negative, so I can increase x faster than I can increase y. So that's why x is being chosen. And then I am determining which line I am getting to first. Am I getting to this line first or this line first? And so I've found that I'm getting to that one first. And that chooses my pivot. OK. So I'm going to call that equation 1, 2, and 3. And I want to form equation 4, 5, and 6. OK, so this is going to be what I refer to as the first iteration. So you go for equation 2 first, so line 2. And you divide that through by 3. 
So 1, 2, 3 relates 1, 2, 3. So equation 1 will become equation 4, 2 will become 5, 3 will become 6. So equation 2 will become 5 by me dividing through by 3. So equation 2 divided by 3. So we get 0, 1, 1 third, 1 third, 0, 2. OK. So let's continue that down. That. OK. So once I've got that, I'm going to use that row to eliminate and get zeros here and here. So I want to end up with a zero here and a zero here. So in order to get zero here, what I'm going to have to do is get equation one and add on two lots of equation five. So equation four will be equation one plus two lots of equation five. So I'm going to get 1 plus 2 lots of 0, 1. Minus 2 plus 2 lots of 1 is 0. Minus 1 plus 2 lots of 1 third is minus 1 third. 0 plus 2 lots of a third is 2 thirds. 0 plus 2 lots of 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 lots of 2 is 4. Then... Uh, for equation 3, I need to get this to be 0, so I want 0 here. And that's only going to happen if I do equation 3 and take away one lot of equation 5. So I'm going to do 0, take away 0. 1, take away 1. 2, take away 1 third. So that's going to get me 5 thirds. 0, take away a third. So minus a third. 1 take away 0 is 1. 7 take away 2 is 5. So what's happened is that x and y were non-basic, as can be told because there's loads of stuff there. S1 and S2 started out as basic. What's happened is that I've swapped out x and S1. x becomes basic and S1 becomes non-basic. So you can tell whether a variable is basic or not by the fact that you just have a single one and the rest are zeros in that column. So one and the rest are zeros. So at the moment X and S2 are basic, whereas Y and S1 are non-basic. Now, have I got to my optimum solution? The answer to that is no, and the way that you can recognise that is because there is still a negative in the top row there. So that means that Y, that column, now becomes my new pivot column. So I look down that column, and I'm going to have the right-hand side divided by each element in the Y column. So 2 divided by 1 third is 6, and 5 divided by 5 thirds is equal to 3. OK, so that means that this value is going to be my pivot, which I circle. OK, so now I go to the second iteration to form equations 7, 8, and 9. So equation 4, 5, and 6 become 7, 8, 9, respectively. So I start off with equation 9, which is number 6 divided by, I need to get that to be 1, so I divide by 5 thirds. So 0 divided by 5 thirds, let's just give myself a little bit of... Let's bring those down first. OK. So 0 divided by 5 thirds is 0. 
0 divided, divided by 5 thirds is 0. 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds is 1. Minus 1 third divided by 5 thirds is minus 1 fifth. Okay. Just double checking that in my head. Uh, yeah, right. And then we've got 1 divided by 5 thirds, which is 3 fifths. And 5 divided by 5 thirds is 3. OK, so now I'm going to use that row to make that 0 and that 0. So I'm going to eliminate the 1 third and the minus 1 third. So for equation 7, it's the new equation 4. But I need to add on a third of equation 9. Because I want minus 1 third plus a third of 1. So 1 plus one third of zero is one. Zero plus a third of zero is zero. Minus a third plus a third of one is zero. Two thirds plus a third, so two thirds plus uh, one third of minus a fifth is three fifths. And then 0 plus 1 third of 3 fifths is 1 fifth. And then 4 plus a third of 3 is 5. OK? Right. Then for equation 8, which is the new equation 5, and I want to make that 0. So I'm going to get equation 5 and then take away a third of equation 9. OK, of my pivot row. So 0, uh, take away a third of 0, is 0. 1, take away a third of 0, is 1. 1 third, take away a third of 1, is 0. 1 third, take away uh, 1 third of minus a fifth, is 2 fifths. Uh, then I've got 0, take away a third of 3 fifths, so minus uh, 1 fifth. And then 2, take away a third of 3, is going to be 1. OK, so this is what my second iteration looks like. Now. Are we done? Yes, because there are no negatives in the top row. I cannot increase p any further. And consequently, y, which was non-basic, is now basic. And that swapped with s2, which went from being basic to non-basic. OK? So, what can I read off from this? Well... Anything that is non-basic is 0. So S1 is 0 and S2 is 0. If with them 0, P is equal to 5. X is equal to 1. And Y is equal to 3. OK, so where we had our feasible region which looked something like this. This point here had the coordinates 1, 3. x is 1, y is 3. And that is the point that maximizes the p equals uh, 2x plus y. Two lots of 1 plus 3 makes 5, which is the value that we get there. OK, so that is how we can do uh, two iterations of the simplex algorithm.